and we start with Hurricane Joaquin. Contrary to what it says, it's actually 155 miles an hour this storm peaked at, at its secondary peak. Um, its first peak was only 130 as it trekked through the Bahamas, um, forming late September, lasting into October. I think everyone knows about Joaquin and what it did. It caused more than 30 fatalities in the Bahamas, along with over $60 million of damages so far. Um, damage was extensive around where the storm stalled over those few days, uh, making one or two landfalls along the way as well in the central and southern Bahamas before pulling off towards the northeast and then reaching that secondary peak. Here's the International Space Station's pass over the storm as well, fantastic imagery from them as always. In the East Pacific, we had Hurricane Marty, a short-lived hurricane reaching a peak wind speed of 80 miles an hour. Despite its close proximity to the Mexican coast, it didn't really cause any ill effects there. Hurricane Oho then formed in the Central Pacific, reaching a peak wind speed nearly major hurricane strength and then moved off towards the northeast, affecting the Pacific Northwest. Tropical Storm Nora nearly made it a hurricane strength, but not quite, petering out before arriving in Hawaii. Hurricane Olaf peaked with winds of 150 miles an hour, uh, very far south that it did that as well, and then passed Hawaii. And then Hurricane Patricia, the strongest storm ever, the strongest hurricane ever in the um, Western Hemisphere, 200 miles an hour, pressure 879 millibars, causing over $280 million of damages and killing 13 in the end, a storm that could have caused much bigger damages if it had hit somewhere else, but thankfully it was a rather um, sparsely populated area, um, even though it was fairly close to Manzanillo and damages were ended up being somewhat limited. Um, it, of course it was still a bad storm, but it could have been a hell of a lot worse with that wind speed and that air pressure of 879 that the Hurricane Hunters intercepted. Remarkable work from them. Cyclone Chapala reached a peak wind speed of 130 miles an hour before making a hurricane landfall in Yemen. <laughs> Fancy that. 940 millibars damage unknown, 12 fatalities. Tropical storm Vamco formed in the Western Pacific and made landfall in Vietnam, causing lots of damage there as well. 14 million dollars actually, and 15 fatalities in all. A typhoon Crovan forming in the Western Pacific, becoming a Category 3 on approach to Iwo Jima in Japan, uh, didn't cause any known damages however. Super Typhoon Tashen uh, formed in late September as well, became a Category 4 and gave uh, Taiwan another sucker punch there after Sudalor and um, made landfall as a Category 4 or, or 3, uh, certainly a major typhoon at landfall and then moved on to China causing extensive damages there. 660 million dollars of damages in fact. Typhoon Mujigi was even worse though making a landfall as a category 4 with winds of 130 miles an hour causing over 3.6 billion dollars of damages and 22 fatalities. Typhoon Choi Wan forming and becoming a hurricane as it moved towards the north, or typhoon of course I should say, and then moving east of Japan not doing anything. Super Typhoon Kopu, a bad one for the Philippines, making landfall as a category 4. Uh, 150 miles an hour was its peak just before landfall with damages of 142 million and over 47 fatalities at least. Um, there's the storm just before it made that landfall. And finally, Typhoon Champy, which peaked with winds of 150 miles an hour, another super typhoon, didn't cause any damages, uh, but certainly passed through the Mariana Islands and came close to those Japanese islands as well. Another one that affected those areas in October 2015.